Hello everyone, I am Jim Tompkins and I like to tell the stories behind some of the greatest songs in rock and roll history. Today's song is Layla by Derek and the Dominoes, the short-lived band fronted by Eric Clapton. Layla is, in my opinion, probably the greatest story song of all time. Not in terms of the story the song itself tells, but in all the backstories that contributed to the making of the song. So let's jump right in and explore. Layla was part of the original double album, Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs by Derek and the Dominoes, which was released in November of 1970. Prior to forming Derek and the Dominoes, Eric Clapton had been part of three other famous bands, The Yardbirds, Cream, and Blind Faith, which was only together for a single album in 1969. Derek and the Dominoes formed after Eric Clapton, Bobby Whitlock, Carl Radel, and Jim Gordon all worked on George Harrison's first post-Beatles album, all Things Must Pass. After that, they started touring as a band at small venues in the UK, then got together at Clapton's house in England and started writing songs. The album Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs would be the end product of this, and the only album the band would record together. It was around the time of the dominoes forming that the main backstory of Layla occurred. One of Eric Clapton's best friends was George Harrison of the Beatles. They met in the mid-60s, and George had recruited Eric to play guitar on his famous Beatles song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. The two also co-wrote the hit Cream song Badge in 1968. George had been married to Patty Boyd Harrison for several years at this point. The problem? Eric Clapton fell madly in love with Patty. The marriage wasn't going well, and Patty felt she'd been neglected and betrayed by George, and she'd grown close to Eric Clapton. There's a famous story about a party that Eric and Patty were at. George was in the studio recording at the time, but after he's done recording, he drives to the party to pick up Patty. He was tired and just wanted to get his wife and go home. But at the party, he can't find her. Just as he's about to leave, through the fog and walking hand in hand up the driveway, come Eric and Patty. George flies into a rage, gets in the car with Patty in tow, and screeches off. Eric was tortured over this situation. He's in love with the wife of one of his best friends in life. But of course, he can't have her, and there's nothing he can do about it. What does one do when you're in love with one of your best friend's wives? Well, one of the things you can do is channel your anguish into a song. Eric had been reading the love story of Layla and Majnun. It's an ancient Arabic story about a man, Majnun, who's madly in love with a woman, Layla. But the woman's father won't let her marry him, and she winds up marrying someone else. And with this, Majnun runs off and turns mad. So Clapton named the woman in his song after Layla. Now Clapton and the Dominoes head over to the U.S. to record the album at Criteria Studios in Miami. When he first wrote Layla, he was in a sad, melancholy state, and the song was more of a self-pitying ballad. But Layla was about to get a jolt of lightning from an unexpected source. In 1970, the Allman Brothers Band was taking off. And this is where a crucial man named Tom Dowd enters the picture. Tom Dowd is one of the most famous music producers in American history. He was producing the Layla and Other Sorted Love Songs record, and he'd also just produced the Allman Brothers' second album. He invited Eric Clapton and the gang to see the Allman Brothers live in Miami. And after that, Dwayne visited the guys in the studio and wound up becoming part of the band. He wasn't a full-time member, as he was in the Allman Brothers who were touring at the time. But on his days off, in between concert dates, he would join the Dominoes in the studio. At the time he joined, Layla was already written, and according to Bobby Whitlock, the keyboardist, they had a pretty good version of it. The first influence Dwayne had was on that opening riff, one of the greatest in rock history. <laughs> I had always heard that that riff was Dwayne Allman's creation, but there's a little bit of uncertainty around that. Bobby Whitlock has said conflicting things. In one interview, he does say Dwayne Allman came up with it, influenced by a riff in the Albert King song, As the Years Go Passing By. But in another interview, he says that Clapton came up with it, but that Dwayne Allman sped it up and sped up the tempo of the whole song. Clapton himself says that Dwayne Allman came up with the riff. So credit should probably be going to Dwayne Allman. Either way, it's an electrifying opening to an all-time great song. Tom Dowd said of the Clapton-Allman dynamic, 
There had to be some sort of telepathy going on because I've never seen spontaneous inspiration happen at that rate and level. One of them would play something and the other reacted instantaneously. Never once did either of them have to say, could you play that again, please? It was like two hands in a glove and they got tremendously off on playing with each other. The lyrics of Layla are all about Eric's passion and love for Patty Boyd Harrison, who he couldn't have, and you can hear it in the words and his singing and his playing. Clapton clearly is channeling his anguish and despair into the song, and in the next verse specifically alludes to the dynamic that was going on between he, Patty, and George. Dave Marsh in the Rolling Stone Illustrated History of Rock and Roll wrote that there are few moments in the repertoire of recorded rock where a singer or writer has reached so deeply into himself that the effect of hearing them is akin to witnessing a murder or a suicide. To me, Layla is the greatest of them. One of the things, though, that makes Layla so unique is it's really two songs in one because you have the main body of the song, then you have the addition of the piano coda at the end. The story behind the piano coda has a life of its own. Eric Clapton didn't write it. He heard Jim Gordon, the drummer, playing it on the piano one day and liked it, so they wound up working it into an instrumental song. It seems that Jim Gordon had been sneaking into the studio at night to work on his own album, but he got caught one night. Clapton worked a deal with him. He let him use the studio for his own stuff, but he wanted the piano coda for the dominoes. So credit for the piano coda was given completely to Jim Gordon. But he's been criticized for that because in reality, he had co-written the song with his girlfriend Rita Coolidge, but didn't give her any credit. Rita Coolidge would go on to become a pop star herself later in the 1970s with songs like Your Love Has Lifted Me Higher. She has said she was infuriated when she heard Layla for the first time. She knew that they'd taken the song she and Jim Gordon had written, jettisoned the lyrics, and added it to the end of Eric's song. And it was the addition of that part that really helped make Layla the famous song that it is. The proof of that is in how the song was initially received. A shortened version of Layla, consisting of the first 243 of Part 1, was released as a single in March 1971 in the U.S. That version peaked at only number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. But then Layla was released on two 1972 compilation records, The History of Eric Clapton, and Dwayne Allman's An Anthology. And that version was the full-length version with the piano coda added to the end. And that version charted at number 7 in the UK and number 10 in the United States. There is something about the piano coda which elevates the song to such a great level. To me, it's like a relaxed elegy to the furiousness of the first part of the record. Like an immediate reflection on what just was. After the song was recorded, Eric met Patty secretly at a flat in South Kensington. He'd asked Patty to come because he'd wanted her to listen to the new song he'd written. He switched on the tape machine, turned up the volume, and played, in Patty's words, the most powerful, moving song I'd ever heard. He played it for her two or three times, all the while watching her face intently for her reaction. Her first thought, though, was, Oh God, everyone's going to know this is about me. 
but apparently most people didn't. And Patty actually remained married to George Harrison for several more years. But eventually the marriage went from bad to worse, and they split. After that, she came to the U.S., joined Eric on one of his tours, and later they were married. So this heartbreaking story of unrequited love, unlike the Layla and Majnun poem, actually has a happy ending. Here are some other interesting facts about Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. Dwayne Allman would never see Layla attain the greatness that it did. In October of 1971, not a year after the album was released, he died in a motorcycle accident. A few weeks before his 25th birthday, and before the full-length version of Layla was released. Layla has charted in the top 10 in three consecutive decades. In 1972, it charted top 10 in both the U.S. and the U.K. In 1982, it was re-released as a single in the United Kingdom and peaked at number four. Then in 1992, Clapton reworked the song into a slower, jazzier version for his MTV Unplugged performance. This completely different version of Layla also became an all-time hit song, won the Grammy Award for Best Rock Song, and was the most played song of the year. The 1957 Gibson Les Paul Gold Top that Dwayne Allman used on the song, often called the Layla Guitar, was sold for $1.25 million at auction in 2019. While Layla has since become the ritual climax to a Clapton concert, it was played live by Derek and the Dominoes only a few times before the band broke up. Clapton and Patty Harrison began living together in 1974 and were married in 1979. Not only did Clapton and George Harrison remain friends, but George attended the wedding and performed at it alongside Ringo Starr. The heartbreaking story with a happy ending unfortunately didn't last. Clapton and Patty would split up in the mid-1980s. Where Layla was about the beginning of this romance, the song Old Love from his 1989 hit album Journeyman is all about the ending of his relationship with Patty. The Piano Coda song has a legacy of its own. It was recorded as its own song in 1973 on the album Chronicles by Booker T and Priscilla Coolidge, the sister of Rita Coolidge. The name Layla is a girl's name of Arabic origin meaning night. It's currently the 24th most popular girl's name in America and has risen in popularity in recent years. Is it partly due to the song Layla? I think so. However, its big increase in popularity came not after the original, but after the jazzy unplugged version of 1992. A number of celebrities have named their children Layla, including Muhammad Ali, Tanya Tucker, and Andy Summers of the Police. The bird sound heard at the very end of the record was actually made by Dwayne Allman using his guitar. The song Bell Bottom Blues, also from Layla and other assorted love songs, is also about Clapton's love for Patty Boyd Harrison, and in my opinion, one of Eric Clapton's very best songs. That's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed this analysis of the classic rock song Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I'll be back soon talking about another classic rock and roll song.